Hi, this video will give you an introduction into what an electronic filter is, as well as look at some of the common types of filters and their uses. So what is a filter then? Well, much like how you could use a sieve to separate the sand at a beach, you can use an electronic filter to separate different frequencies from a signal, meaning your filter would allow the frequencies you want to pass and block the rest. Filters can generally be divided into two distinct types, passive and active. Passive filters just use components such as resistors and capacitors that don't need any power, while active filters use powered components such as op-amps as well as passive components. If you are interested in learning more about these components, I have videos on them linked below. Today, however, we're going to be focusing primarily on passive filters. So let's take a look at one of the most common types of filter, the passive or low-pass filter. Low-pass means it passes low frequencies but blocks high ones. In this circuit, we have an alternating current supply over here of 1 volts, as well as a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor. The graph on the right here is what we would like to see in the ideal world as far as frequency response. So it passes the low frequencies but blocks the high ones. However, sadly, we don't live in the ideal world, so let's simulate this circuit and look at a more realistic result. Here's our simulation. Here you can see the filter passes frequencies up to about 100 hertz or so before the signal is significantly attenuated and then reduced down to almost nothing. Most importantly, however, you can see the change is a gradual slope, not a sudden step. Let's quickly look at how to calculate your component values. A standard equation for calculating a low-pass filter is frequency, or cutoff frequency, equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times your resistor value times your capacitor value. Cutoff frequency is simply the point at which your signal is reduced to 70% of its original strength. Any higher frequency are considered to be significantly attenuated. So here we have frequency or cutoff frequency equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times 1000, which is 1k ohms, times 1 times 10 to the minus 6, which is 1 microfarad, which gives us 159 hertz. Now, if we look back at the simulation, you can see that at around 70% attenuation, the frequency is roughly 159 hertz. The low pass filter has all sorts of uses, but is particularly useful in audio applications to remove high frequency content that you don't want. Let's take a look at one of the most common types of filters, the high pass filter. High pass means it passes high frequencies but blocks low ones. In this circuit here, we have an alternating supply similar to our last circuit, as well as an in-series 1 microfarad capacitor and a 1k resistor, same values as our low pass, just rearranged. The graph on the right side here is what we would see in an ideal world, where the low frequencies are blocked completely, but the high frequencies are passed fully. However, as we already know, the real world value will be slightly different. So let's look at a simulation. Here you can see that the filter blocks frequencies before 150 hertz, but after that, the signal is less attenuated. Once again, you can see the response is a gradual slope and not a sharp step. Interestingly, the equations to calculate cutoff frequency for both high pass and low pass filters are exactly the same. So if we look closely, we can see that at 150 hertz, the signal is at roughly 70% attenuation. The only difference then between the high pass and low pass filter is which side of the cutoff point is blocked and which side is passed. I will quickly show the equations again though briefly so you can see them, but they are the exact same as the low pass filter. The high pass filter has many audio applications to remove or attenuate lower frequencies, perhaps to lower the noise of some drums for example. Now, let's look at a slightly more complicated passive filter, the band pass filter. This filter, instead of purely filtering all high or all low frequencies, only allows a set range of frequencies to pass. There are many ways of making bad pass filters, but this version works by essentially adding a low pass filter and a high pass filter in series. On the right here, you can see the ideal frequency response as a step that only passes frequencies in a central region. Let's simulate the circuit and see what the real world frequency response would be like. Here you can see that the low frequencies are attenuated, then there is a band of frequencies that are passed in the center, and then the high frequencies are also attenuated. Let's take a look at the equations of this circuit. The fundamental equation we're using is still the same. Cutoff frequency is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times r, your resistor value, times c, your capacitor value. Only in this circuit, you calculate two cutoff frequencies, one for the low pass segment over here, and one for the high pass segment here. So we have 1 divided by 2 pi times 1000, or 1k ohms, times 1 times 10 to the minus 6, or 1 microfarad which gives us 159 hertz. And then our low pass cutoff frequency is one divided by two pi times 1000 or one k ohms times one times 10 to the minus nine or one nanofarad giving us 159 kilohertz. Looking back at the simulation, we can see that the high pass cutoff frequency at 70% is 159 hertz as expected. And that the 
Low pass cutoff frequency is 159 kilohertz as expected. This kind of filter has all sorts of uses such as in radio receivers where they only want to pick up a certain range of frequencies. The final kind of common filter is called a band stop filter. This filter is used to exclude or attenuate a specific range of frequencies and pass everything else. Now, if you remember, our band pass filter was made by essentially adding a low pass and a high pass filter in series, as you can see here on the simulation. This is fairly easy to do, so you can just add them in series like we have. However, a band stop filter is made by adding a low pass and high pass filter in parallel, which is slightly more complicated, so really it deserves its own video. I will, however, quickly show you one method of making a band stop filter. This method uses not only a resistor and a capacitor, but also an inductor. And as you can see, the low frequencies are passed, the middle frequencies are fully attenuated, and the high frequencies are once again passed. It should be noted though, that inductors are not generally favoured in filter design, as they tend to be larger and more expensive. Thanks for watching, be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and have a good day. See ya!